Welcome to our electron line. Here's a really good example of how you take two voltages in the time domain and first convert them to the phasor domain before we go ahead and add the two together because it would be a lot more difficult to do it like this. And if we're going to convert it from the time domain to the phasor domain, we should write both voltages in terms of the cosines. That makes it a lot easier. So on the first one, we need to first convert that to the cosine. And the first thing we probably want to do is make it from a minus sign to a positive sign by adding 180 degrees. So this can now be written as a positive 10 times the sine of omega t minus 30 degrees and plus 180 degrees. So when we combine that together, this is equal to 10 times the sine of omega t plus 150 degrees. And now we want to convert that to the cosine. We can do that by subtracting 90 degrees. So this can be written as 10 times the cosine of omega t plus 150 degrees minus 90 degrees, because that converts it from a sine to a cosine. Then combine these two, this becomes equal to 10 times the cosine of omega t plus 60 degrees. So now, we have V2, which is expressed like this, and we have V1, which is expressed like this. So now we can convert them to the magnitude phase uh, format, so that would be to the phasor format, as we call it. So V1 can now be written as the magnitude, which is 10, times the phase angle, which would be positive 60 degrees, and V2 is equal to the magnitude of 20, times the phase angle of 45 degrees. So that would be the phasor format of the two voltages. Now when we want to add those, we have to write those in terms of the real and imaginary parts. So this can be written as 10 times the cosine of 60 degrees plus j times the sine of 60 degrees. And this can be written as 20 times the cosine of 45 degrees plus j times the sine of 45 degrees. And now we can write this as complex numbers in terms of the real and imaginary parts. The cosine of 60, well that's equal to 0.5 times 10, that would be 5 plus the sine of 60, take the sine, times 10, that would be 8.66, so plus j times 8.66, and for the v2, the cosine of 45, that would be 0.707 times 20, which is 14.14, 14.14 for the real part, and that would be for the imaginary part would be J times 14.14. Now we can add them together. Now we can go V1 plus V2, and as you can tell, that's a lot easier now. That would be equal to 19.14 plus, when we add this together, that's 22.14. 80, so 22.8, let's see, that's 8, that's, yep, that is correct. And of course, I can't forget the J, because that's the imaginary part. There we go. So we don't really want to leave it like that, because our voltages were expressed in the time domain, so we want to reconvert that to the time domain. So we can then say that V1 plus V2 is going to be equal to V max times the cosine of omega t plus the phase angle, where v max can be found. v max is equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the components, 19.14 squared plus 22.8 squared. And the phase angle can be found by taking the inverse tangent of the, that would be the imaginary part, which is 22.8, divided by the real part, which is 19.14. You see how much easier it is to convert to the uh, phasor domain in order to find the sum of the voltages. So let's go ahead and do this. So this is a 19.14 squared plus 22.8 squared equals, take the square root, that gives us 29 point, uh, let's round off to one decimal place. So this is equal to 29.8, and on the phase angle, 22.8 divided by 19.14. Uh, let's see here. And uh, take the inverse tangent. That gives us 49.99. So this is equal to 49.99.
degrees, which is basically 50 degrees. All right, so let's go ahead and plug that in here. So V1 plus V2 is equal to the magnitude, which is 29.8, and times decoup, times the cosine of omega t, plus a phase angle of 50 degrees. And this would then be the resultant of adding those two voltages together. So again, go ahead and take the voltages in the time domain, write them in the form of the cosines. Once you've done that, you can easily convert them to the magnitude and, and the phase angle, which means now we're converted into the phasor domain or the frequency domain. And then we convert to the real and imaginary parts, add the real parts together, add the imaginary parts together, and then reconvert back to the frequency, uh, I should say not the frequency, but the time domain, so that can have the same representation as what you started with. And that's how it's done.